Oh, so we can't say anything really naughty now. Yeah. It's still official. I mean, <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to another industry professional session. These are getting better and better and this is a brilliant way to end the year. Uh, this is our last one of 2022. It just seems like, like we started these last summer, didn't we Daniel, like summer 2021. So this has just been like amazing. Uh, I am really honored to, um, to spend the next hour with the very great company of Kathleen Ham. Hi Kathleen. Hello, everybody. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, just, a very, just to give you a very brief background, Kathleen and I met in summer 2020 when uh, Union Management did a series of online action retreats. And I invited Kathleen on and she did, uh, I want to say three in total, I think. Um, and Kathleen is uh, co-owner and agent at the very prestigious Radical Artists Agency in Colorado. Uh, Kathleen, how is your day going today? First of all, thank you, because I know I know it's like 11.30 in the morning where you are, and I know it's like prime agent time, so thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, it's, a, it's a busy Thursday, and uh, I'm excited to be with, uh, this is my highlight, and it's going to be bookended by going to the theater later tonight. I see a lot of theater, I rep a lot of talent that come from the theater world, because uh, yeah. Um, that's, you know, kind of our, uh, pool of talent here. A lot of them are theatrical actors. Um, the beauty of that is they're well invested in their craft, um, and super turkey. So makes my life a little easy. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Daniel, I know you've got quite a few questions as well, haven't you? So, uh, yeah. And, and also as, as always, if you have anything you want to ask Kathleen, um, do raise your uh, hand and then we can just come to you, no problems at all. Yeah, because I, I think these sessions, um, I think they're really useful for, for actors because um, it, it's an opportunity to ask the questions that you don't really, you know, you can't really find out from doing a Google search, um, you know, about how people feel about stuff, really. Because um, the, the questions that I've got, um, you know, I could, things like, like for example, you just said, Kathleen, it's a busy Thursday, and I'm I'm interested because from an actor's perspective, we, you know, we often know what our agent what agents do, but I think that a, a greater sen a sense of understanding of really what you do will help the relationship and help us take the pressure off us thinking, you know, why, you know, what are you doing for me, mm -hmm. and takes the pressure off you of us being desperate and needy. Yeah. So the question I've got for you is, what does a busy Thursday look like for you? Um, okay, well, so far, uh, so it's just my business partner and I, so we do just about everything. Um, we do our um, accounting, our billing, uh, we maintain our website, uh, we negotiate contracts, we make sure talent are where they're supposed to be and on time and all that good stuff. So, um, for example, this morning before connecting with you, I have um, pushed back on a contract uh, that had some language in it that I did not believe was suitable to be in that contract because it was not something disclosed initially. Um, I have uh, created and sent out several invoices for jobs that have taken place in the last day or two. Um, I uh, got a notice from a client that's looking to produce something next Wednesday, I think it is, and they came in with a very low rate, so I pushed back and said, hey, if it's this, it really should be that, where can you meet me? And they came back with uh, kind of meeting me in between, which is acceptable, um, and uh, sent out information for two gentlemen that are working on Monday. Um, and made sure I've collected all the details for them so that they know where they're going and they can get there on time and they have the right uh, materials along with them, meaning like wardrobe, et cetera. Um, and we're currently working on a film. So uh, that's been ongoing for a couple of weeks um, and just making sure that 
you know, the most current uh, script has gone out to people because they keep blue lining and changing and that, you know, everybody's schedule is up to par and who needs to get a COVID test before they step on set and yada, yada, yeah. yada. And so, and then the day just continues to unfold like that. I just saw another audition come in for voiceover, which we'll just have to sit there for a while. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just, there's always something, there's always something. And um, and then when we have quiet moments, we hop online and add to the website. I sat here at my desk until 745 last night and put a couple of people up on the website and adjusted some of their updated materials. And um, there's never a dull moment. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Can I ask within, within all of that, because that's that's pretty much, you know, the before before lunchtime. And there's yeah. a lot in there and it's a lot of a lot of little bits and a lot of detail and a, and a lot of you you've got to get this otherwise that doesn't happen and every everything you do possibly begets another three or four things that you have to follow up with so when it comes to actors um contacting you um we feel i guess you know well i've sent an email to my agent and he you know 25 minutes ago and then and she's not responded or you know, two days ago, and, and and what they don't people don't realize maybe is that your inbox is is just mm -hmm. you know they've moved down to you know three hundred down the inbox. So so the question I've got is about about helping us as actors understand how our communication with you impacts you. You know, mm -hmm. maybe our you know. Hi, how's it going? Emails, but also the you know what what's going on? Emails. Okay, meaning what's going on? I haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? I haven't heard from you in a while. Okay, um, we try to get back to all emails in a very timely manner. Um, we certainly have to prioritize emails. Um, if it's something that can wait, I tend to try and give them a quick tap back and just say. Hey, I've received this. I'll be in touch with more information, you know, when I've got it at hand, because I don't always know the answer. Sometimes I have to go resource previous invoices or previous contracts, or I have to go to, into my accounting and figure out, you know, when did that job expire? Are they going to get uh, a renewal fee, something of that nature? Um, you know, Kathy and I, I think what sets us apart, we run a, what we would call a boutique agency in comparison to some of the other agencies in this market because we do not host a modeling division. Um, I previously ran another agency for about 19 years uh, that had a modeling division. And the beauty of coming on with Kathy is uh, we're known as the actor's agency. So we deal 100% with actors um, and again, people, that uh, talent that we can turn around and send on to a casting tomorrow with no concern or uh, mm -hmm. worry. Um, they're all tried and true and invested in their craft and ready to go. Um, you know, I prefer email than phone calls, but I do also think that some of the personal touch that we offer is we will pick up the phone and talk to people. And I have to say, like, it's funny you ask this question because in the last three days, it has come to our uh, attention in a very sweet way where someone has said, oh my gosh, you guys are so kind and you're so approachable and you respond. And I've had terrible experiences with other representation where they all never pick up the phone. They barely ever answer an email. And I'm kind of left to my own device to kind of fill in the blanks. And so um you know those little things are what create the relationship for us between the the agency and our talent but we also take a really vested interest in our talent um i want to know who just got married or who just had something sad happen in their life or something of that nature not because i'm nosy but it also allows me to understand where they're coming from when i present them with something Okay, or if, if I can push them to raise the bar for themselves a little bit, you know? Yeah, that's, that's great. So on, on that note, um, in terms of, because again, we, you know, we, we don't know how much to keep in touch with people. We don't know what you want to know. And it's not like, hi, I'm, I've booked, you know, um, you know, I've got, I've got a, well, even I've got a new dog, I guess is relevant in a way, but it's about how, how much, 
the information we give you, how does that help you understand us as products more to be able to sell us? Because it feels like a fine line. Yeah, there is a fine line. Um, I think that sometimes as talent, you just need to put the information out there and not be looking to get a response. Yeah. Um, there's a fine line between imparting information that you think is important for your agent to know and looking for attention. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Um, I think sometimes like, hey, I just booked such and such theater thing. Uh, do you guys want comps? Let me know. No pressure, you mm -hmm. know, um, or, you know, um, updating me, you know, here's my newest resume, or I just had headshots taken. Here's, here's a link to all the headshots or something of that nature. I think the biggest thing uh, for any good professional relationship is to be very clear about what you're looking for when you send something to my inbox. Yeah. And, if you're and looking for stroking, I don't have a lot of time to individually stroke people, you know, <laughs> but I do have time to say, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing. Or um, I'll update your resume or you know, thanks for letting me know that you're going to be out of town for two weeks over the holiday or something of that nature. But um, there's that fine line of imparting information and then looking for something in response uh, because you, you need to fill something for yourself. Um, you know, needy is not a good thing in this business. <laughs> yeah. um, it's probably not a good thing in any business. Um, but, uh, those kind of emails start to stand out when someone's constantly looking for a little stroke or to engage in conversation that really, I have no business being engaged in anyway. Um, but you know, nice little details or happy holidays, or thanks for a great year, or I just booked this, or here's my updated materials, or do you want to come to come see my show or, you know, stuff of that nature. Uh, very valid. And we will get back to everybody. The nice thing about working in partnership is, you know, I may respond to somebody and CC her and put our names to it and vice versa. So, you know, we make sure we get all the bases covered. I know that, um, you know, some of the people on this call, you know, are looking for an agent. So, and I know from my point of view, what I look for when I get an email in from, you know, from an actor what do you you know what what gets your attention what's like some 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 pluses and some perhaps some no-nos as far as you're concerned um i think as a professional talent if you're looking to put your materials in somebody's inbox and ask for a possible meeting or representation hmm. have your packet together it's just like marketing 101 i want to see your headshot i want to know uh, you know, I want to see your resume. I want to see, um, a, keep it short and sweet. Here's who I am. This is what I'm looking for. Here's the last three things I booked. I've looked at your website. Educate yourself. Don't, don't come to me if you haven't even looked at my website and then ask me questions like, oh, where would I fit in? You should know that already because you should have done the research to have looked at the website. And I would, you know, is there an opportunity for me to connect with you guys? Um, something of that nature. And then if you get a response, you have to be engaged. You know, uh, right now, everything is still very self-tape. Um, and I don't foresee that changing as far as castings go in the future, um, because it has really kind of made things even go that much more quickly. Um, so we typically, if we find ourselves interested in someone, um, we will send them a request for a self-tape audition. Things that I'm looking for when I send that out are, um, A, can you, you know, stand up and do the copy um, or the scene or something of that nature, whatever's been sent to you. But have you followed the instructions? Because I'll also send instructions for how to do the self-taping. Um, and so we're looking for that technical aspect. And I know it's very difficult for actors because now all of a sudden you've become the sound guy and the lighting guy and the director and the you know DP and all this other stuff, but that's just the nature of our business at this point. Um, and <clears throat> you know, if someone is not capable of pulling that together, that's, a, that's an indication for me that maybe they're not ready to be in my talent pool. 
um, <clears throat> because I don't have the time to sit and develop people. I've graduated <laughs> from that part of my of my uh, career. Um, but, um, and giving as much information without being overly wordy, you know, I don't want to hear like name drops. I don't want to hear about, you know, your second grade play or something of that nature, but give as much information up front so that I can really review and get a feel for who you are as an actor, um, and your capabilities and what you've created for yourself or, you know, something of that nature. The, the, the ones that are difficult are um, people that send something that A, has no body in the email. So they don't introduce themselves. They don't say anything. They just send me a headshot and a resume. So I'm like, hmm, okay. I don't want to have to come back and keep asking you questions. So the most concise information you can give me in one email straight up right at the top, that's the one that's going to catch my eye. If I am constantly having to say like, well, what kind of home studio do you have? Or do you have other representation? Or what have you been working on? Or, you know, do you, you know, do you have a headshot? We get emails like, I'm really interested in this and that, and it comes with nothing, but other than I'm really interested in that. Yeah. Where's your headshot? Where's your resume? I don't, I don't want to be roped into like this cyclical conversation. You know, you are a business. Yeah, you are a business, send me your business marketing packet and allow me to have the chance to review that instead of having to ask for it. Great advice. Yeah. You know, I think that the idea of an actor being a business, I've always got on board with. I've always loved that myself. But I know that in the UK, I know that it's, it's a relatively recent thing. And, you know, it kind of brings up like, I think a lot of actors in the UK have this kind of like, oh, I'm a creative. How is that business like? But it's the whole thing, isn't it? It's the whole yeah. kind of package. Yeah. Um, this is a business. Um, and if you don't understand how to market yourself and conduct yourself as a professional business person, I need somebody that's going to match with me in that regard. Um, because that's partly your job as well. Right. And it, how can you trust me to do my job well if you don't know what the business part of that is? Um, so understanding yourself as a business, you know, um, this is what I've done so far. This is where I'm hoping to go. This is my five year goal plan. Are you the right person to help me execute it? Because I'm not in control. You're choosing me and I'm choosing you. We both have a choice here. You know, it's not just like throwing a dart at the board and like, maybe she likes me, maybe she doesn't like me. You know, you may not like me. I may not be the right agent for you after you sent your information out and maybe you get three phone calls and you meet with those three people and you get to decide who's right for you and said all the right things about like helping you to execute this five-year goal plan. So in terms of plans and goals, um, your existing clients and also your um, potential clients. Um, how much do you plan the future with them? Or, or is, it, is it more of a, you know, let's see what we can get at the moment? You know, how, how does that work for you? Well, I certainly live in the moment because that's how my business is. <laughs> there, there's not a lot of like a future. Uh, we all have an idea of what we'd like our future to be, of course. Um, Denver can be two things. Uh, we either have people coming into our market that were very successful in a much larger market and they've come here for a style of life, <clears throat> or we have younger people and sometimes it, age actually really has no defining, it has no definition on it at all. Or we have people that are starting their career here and they're like, you know, in three years, I'd like to be living in Los Angeles. And I'd like to have an agent here and there and what have you, and you know, be working in and out of different markets. And then we also have people that home base here that work all over the country. Um, and they have really finally created this almost smoke and mirror, if you will. They always seem like they're just down the street and tangible, but the, you know, then I find out they're in Texas shooting a film. Um, or they're, you know, so 
I think some, I think really, I'm sorry, I'm getting off of track a little bit, but I think one of the things that's really unique to actors is being able to say, this is the kind of life I wanna have. This is where I want to have it. This is my home base, but my job requires travel because there used to be this thing, well, how could I book the job in Los Angeles? I live in Denver. Okay, well then I guess you're not gonna book a job in Los Angeles. You can home base anywhere, but your job requires travel. So you have to just have that flexibility and it's a different mindset. Instead of pigeonholing yourself into one market, you can be in any market, but this is your home base. I think that's one thing that COVID kind of gave us because mm. you know with the um you know with, you know with with lockdown and everything people kind of stuck but actually now there are jobs for example in outlander a serious shooting in scotland and sometimes it says you know must be based in scotland and sometimes it's it says well actually you can have a base in scotland but it doesn't necessarily matter too much so right. you know we submit some of our actors if they live in london for for, for, for you know outlander sure. time yeah sure absolutely um, again, a little of that smoke and mirrors. I mean, yeah. nobody really needs to know where yeah. your home base is. If you're yeah. willing to travel and put yourself up Absolutely. for a great gig, go yeah. for it. Totally. Go for it. Um, don't forget, raise your hand if you have anything to connect with Kathleen about, anything to ask, anything like that about agent life or actors or anything like that. Um, it's, oh, uh, having said that, Mia has just raised her hand. Hi, Mia. Hey. Hi. Um, Hi. This is my first time in this particular industry talk. So hi, thank you for hi. arranging it. Um, I have just started acting like professionally. I've only been working as a professional actor for three months and I've got an audition tomorrow for uh, to be in a showcase for agents. And I'm deciding what monologue to do. So I was wondering, I'm stuck between two. One is, Lady Macbeth because mm. I've recently just played her in a TIE tour so I've like practiced her a lot but I've also got a more contemporary monologue from Five Kinds of Silence which is about um I don't know if anyone knows it is about sexual abuse and I'm a bit stuck between which one so I was wondering if anyone had any advice on which one I should because I know both of them so I could do either. Sure. So let me ask you, is there not an option for you to do two contrasting monologues? Because often a lot of times they're looking for, you know, one side and the other to kind of showcase what you can bring in either arena. Are you, are you, mm. is there an option to do either or, or, or yeah. do both? They've only, asked, they've only asked for one, um, okay. I, which I found surprising because like I'm doing drama school auditions at the same time and they're also, they all, they all ask for, contemporary and uh, Shakespeare so it's okay. just one do you what do you know about the showcase is the showcase <clears throat> have a more contemporary feel to it or is it a showcase for uh garnering more work for the theater for the stage mm. see it's for 16 to 18 year olds so I'm wondering whether I should go for the more sort of contemporary younger one because yes I did play Lady Macbeth but she's a bit out of my age range she's yeah. like I think she is a bit too old like the the person playing Macbeth was 45 which yeah. is a bit <laughs> awkward so, but I mean just my opinion but I think if if that's the case I would stick with a monologue that is in alignment with who you are and will highlight both the youth and the contemporary, um, uh, you know, monologue. But then you can always say, would you like to see something else? I recently just did this and I have it and I'm more than happy to show it to you. Because honestly, if somebody likes what they saw and then you say, and I have this uh, additional monologue if you'd like to see something different as a contrast, mm -hmm. and then they can say yes or no. But chances okay. are they might want to see both. Thank you. I always lead, lead with what's closest to you, right? Um, lead, what's, lead with what's closest to you. Can I, can I follow on with that a bit, Kathleen, about, because you're selling us, you, you know, you're, you're an agent on our behalf and, you know, I could, 
come across to to you or me I could come across to you as being um, uh, uh, I, I'm not I'm not saying this me because I don't know you at all but she could come across as being a real hard nosed nasty person but underneath it is really a very sweet person in real life but you're selling the hard nosed person that's what uh, that is, is is that the way it works that that um, you know. Uh, I'm not, I'm not wording this very well. Um, you know, I know that there's a lady, Bonnie Gillespie, you might know, is, is, says, you know, get your type and take mm. it to the bank. You know, if you might be, you, you might come across as being fat, nerdy type, but in real life, you're not really like that. Sure. But, but I think you have to gravitate to what the industry reflects back to you. Um, yeah. I'll use an example. I have a gentleman on my boards um, who is the nicest kind of gentle giant, what have you, but he is a little bit large in stature and he kept getting cast as these kind of creepy guys. Yeah. And he came to me and he's like, I keep getting cast as all these kind of like, you know, the tough creepy guy and whatever. And he's like, I'm not creepy. And I said, I know you're not creepy, but if somebody wants to pay you and that's the, the industry keeps telling you that this is like kind of in your wheelhouse and you're mm. successful at it, take it. You can be whoever you want to be, you know, 24 yeah. seven when you're not on set or stage. Um, but you have to sometimes accept seeing what the industry reflects back to you. Because if you're fighting against what the industry keeps reflecting back to you, you're, you're just, you're trying to swim upstream and you're not gonna get really anywhere. Um, and sometimes it's just different than how you see yourself. The world will always see you different than how you see yourself. That's yeah. a great takeaway, by the way. Yeah. I love that takeaway. Might just write that down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so Mia, it's, you know, if, you know, if the industry is going to see you as Lady Macbeth or they're going to see you as, mm. the, I'll see her as Lady Macbeth, then that's kind of what monologue you should do in yeah. a way. I have, um, I have been typecast as a lot of victims. Um, I always get cast as like kind of, girl something horrible is happening to her which <laughs> my mom my mom does not like that my mom won't come and see me or anything because she's the damsel in distress <laughs> yeah I would, I would agree i would agree with you know with kathleen about you know that you know you know mm. do the contemporary <clears throat> monologue mia and mm. you know fit stronger into your casting type and that's not to say you won't do an awesome lady macbeth but the traditional the traditional version of lady macbeth is of mm. course you know slightly out of your casting range right now so mm -hmm. yes stick to that and you know let us know how it goes good luck let us know how it yeah. goes Mia sorry go oh, oh just sorry. one more thing Mia to piggyback on what Danny was just saying to you there's also an element <clears throat> uh that is taken into account whether you're aware of it or not based on the type of material you bring in. So if you brought in the Lady Macbeth that's, you know, 25 years, your junior or your senior, right? They look at you and they go, hmm, she doesn't know her type at all. Like, you know, it's great. It's a beautiful monologue, but like, there's no relation to that monologue. Why would she bring in something that's, you know, much older than her, what have you? So there's those little things that we start to look for and kind of go, oh, why would, why would she choose that over this, right? Maybe she's not in alignment. Maybe she's not tuned into what she is, right? Or what she can portray. So um, I just wanted to add that to it. Can I, add, can I add something? I know, Lou, I know you got your hand up, but I just want to, I just want to just follow on a little bit with that because <laughs> Because I know a lot of times actors talk about, you know, will we'll come to you and say, I, I can I can play everything. I want to do comedy, drama. I want to do everything. Oh, I want to be I tall, hate small. I hate, I hate. And that, that, you know, that's what we want to do. However, how much does that help or hinder you as an agent and you as an agent maybe potentially choosing a, a, an actor to be on your books? Um, I think it's good for an actor to kind of know what their sweet spot is. Um, and that's really important. But I also think if you're a really good actor, you should, you more than likely would have the capability to do multiple things. But I think, um, you know, uh, jack of all trades, master of none, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to find a focus and you've got to find, uh, this is, this is your, your one thread that will be woven in between all of them, right? Um, so 
being really clear about the types of roles that you're going to play and making sure that that's your solid. And then you can branch off and you can do comedy or drama or you know whatever the case may be, but being very clear because you're telling me how I get to market you, right? And if you don't understand that yourself, it's really hard for me to decipher as well. The other thing is sometimes, uh, and this hasn't happened in a long time, but um, people uh, sometimes, because they're looking to have some kind of shock value or wow, um, it just goes right back into that circle of maybe they don't really understand what they are doing or what their, you know, their type is. Um, because the whole intention of the material they've chosen is so outlandish. Um, and it almost seems like they're trying to kind of like poke at you, like, oh, it's huge, it's shock value, it's blah, blah, blah. And it's it's a big turnoff. So, you know, keeping solid to that main focus of what's in alignment with your type of role, um, I think is always a, a good rule of thumb. Thank you. Um, Lou, hi, you've got your hand up. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, it's also my first time joining this session. So uh, Thank yeah, coming. thanks a lot to Danny, Daniel, and also Kathleen uh, to organize this. Um, so yeah, I'm, my name is Lou. I'm a Chinese actor based in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Um, I got a couple questions. One is, um, I'm just starting uh, since about one, two years ago. So I haven't built up like a, a big portfolio yet, um, but I'm looking at, you know, potential opportunities in Europe, UK and America. And of course, in America, there's a lot more opportunities. Um, but I'm wondering, like, does it make sense for me now as not an established actor to reach out to American um, agencies? Because, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, not based in US. If I'm booked for anything, probably a, a visa is required to fly me over to do anything. Does it make sense? Or maybe I should wait until, yeah, maybe I have some good uh, production in my portfolio, then reach out. You know, I don't think there's uh, anything wrong with reaching out. I think it's a good way for you to see uh, your marketability and where you might fit in in a market like the US um, and to see what kind of response but you have to be ready to back up and say, you know, willing to travel, da 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 da, this and that. Um, you know, uh, have have a solid way to express that you're willing to come here, you're willing to relocate, you're willing to whatever the case may be, instead of just like testing the waters, right? Because someone might write you back and say, "Hey, where are you based?" Oh, okay, you know. What are you willing to do? Do you have that flexibility? Um, so be armed with that information and be solid in what that is, not just like, oh, I didn't really think about that, hmm. right? You already have a goal plan. You already have an idea how you would execute that if something were to come into play. And like say in my initial email, should I mention that I'm not based in US until they ask? You could just say currently based in Amsterdam due to work. That doesn't say okay. that, that doesn't say that you're stuck there. Nope. But you're revealing to them where you're at. Nice and simple. Yeah. We have yeah. a big airport there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you really need to fly everywhere. Uh, cool. Uh, thanks. And another one is, um, I mean, I haven't. Um, I, I'm just about to start reaching out to UK agencies actually as well. I'm wondering, I've, I've looked up a few and I saw some have, uh, some already has, uh, have, um, let's say Asian male actor about my age range, some don't have. Then does it make sense for me to target the one or in case I, I got two response, would, would it make more sense to, to go for the one with already like someone similar like me or someone completely different? I feel like, it could be good reason for, for, for both part. Yeah, uh, good question. Um, I think reach out to all of them, see what sticks. 
I think that if you see another person that's similar to yourself on someone's boards, there's an indication that they're getting that person work and that there's work through that agency for someone like yourself. So um, it doesn't mean that, you know, agency Z over on the other side, just they lost out because that guy went there and they have work too. So I, I say, reach out to all of them and see what sticks. Um, and, you know, you're looking for the feedback. All the feedback is something that you're going to put into your data of like what, you know, where are you being received? Why are you being received? What kind of auditions? What kind of feedback are you getting? This, you're compiling all this information for yourself so that you make your next best step, right? Um, the work that you've been getting in Amsterdam, uh, is it in your native language or is it in English? Is What, what kind of work you've been getting? Um, so far, I've done, I see quite a few short films, but then this mold is mostly uh, English speaking. Uh, a couple of productions are in Dutch. Uh, for Mandarin speaking only once, but a more like a corporate job. Commercials is a bit easier, but mostly non-speaking roles. Yeah. A bit of advice that I would give to you unsolicited uh, would be um, work with a vocal coach uh, so that you have your native accent. You obviously speak multiple languages but also kind of fine tuning a little bit of that English or that American accent, right? So now you're just adding to your repertoire, right? You know, mm -hmm. I can give you an American accent. I can give you my native accent. I can speak in this language. I can speak in that language. The more you have as that option, you know, it, it just adds to your marketability. I would agree yeah. with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, are you in Spotlight Thanks. by the way, Lou? Are you in Spotlight? Yeah, I am, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so like, I'm also curious, let's say when you get a, a custom call and then you have multiple actors who fit the bill, do you actually send all of them or most of them for the, for the job or you only send the one you think that has best shot? I send them all. Okay. I, I want to win the job. So if I have five people that fit what they're looking for, I send those five people because you know they're going to decide which they like. Um, I'm working in partnership with the casting. I am not the casting director. So while I could think, you know, so lose the best person, you know, I may be off. Maybe they're looking for something a little different that I hasn't been communicated or something of that nature. So I present my best options up front. So that if I had five, I'm going to put all five of them up and see because then I'm also getting feedback. Because, yeah. you know, maybe they gravitate to someone that I would have gone like, oh, I'm surprised. Okay, I didn't see that coming, but that's interesting. And then I get to kind of figure out like why they gravitated. And I learned something about my talent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Now that's good to know because I was thinking if they're me and another two or one Asian guy, if they're going to just send one, then then maybe I should better choose one that doesn't have a, you know, actor like me. No, now. but that's um, a beautiful question. And when you are interviewing agencies, that's a great question to ask. Yeah, I, see, yeah. I see that you have two other young men on your boards that are similar to me. Um, you know, are you picking and choosing? I want to make sure that I'm on every casting call because that will define for you if that's the right agency for you. Because if they say, oh, we only send out one, well, then maybe you don't want to be somewhere where they have four people, right? Yeah. That are similar to yeah. you. That's, that's yeah. a really good way for you to decide whether that's the right agency for you or not. I will tell you in how we run our boards, I may have four men that fit in your category, but they all bring something different. 100%. I don't bring people on to be exactly like other people. Because I've yeah. already got that. There may, you may fit in a pocket together by aesthetics, by languages spoken, or whatever the case may be, but each of them brings something different that's unique yeah. to them. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and also, and, uh, another question, which is related to what you talked about earlier. Uh, which is about like casting type. So I'm about to uh, to book uh, a new 
photo shoot session for a new set of headshots. And on that photo photographer's website, I saw his you know, Q, uh, um, Q and A or F and Qs that he said, oh, you know, it's better that you know your custom type. So you bring your wardrobes. So, you know, then it's easier um, for, for, for agency to, to sell you. But then I was thinking that maybe could that also pigeonhole myself to certain um, custom type, no? No, because no, I mean, what it shows, what it shows me is um, that you have an understanding of the type of roles that you book. And if you're a really good actor, then I know I can push your boundaries, but it gives me something solid to hold on to. If you are playing the bad guy, if you're playing uh, the military, young military person, if you're playing, you know, the doctor something of that nature don't go to your don't go to your photo shoot with costumes but go with a tire that lends to that let me fill it in a little bit too right but go with uh a tire that's going to allow uh going to allow me to see like oh my god this kid would be great as like a military or he's you know he's a gang member or he's a doctor or something of that nature it gives me an understanding that you also know what you're up to and what you're getting, what your type is. And then we can push those boundaries. It's not a pigeonhole. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Lou, cool. for your Thanks questions. Thanks a lot. I yeah. appreciate thank it. Thank you. We've got about 15 minutes left, by the way. This time goes go by so far. So thank you everyone for your question so far. You know what, Kathleen, um, the similarities between American agents and British agents are exactly like, you know, they are exactly the same. You know, the, the stuff that you've been saying is I've, I've been going oh yeah exactly all, all, all of these things when Mia was asking a question was Lou when Lou was asking his question exactly the same and I think that sometimes actors feel as if there's a big division between you know UK agents and US agents but it's but it's pretty much identical yeah yeah I mean because we do the same things we do the same things we do the same things um I will tell you, uh, it just, you know, finding the right agent is finding an agent where you feel like you can, they can be your champion. Um, and they can also be there and understand if it wasn't the greatest experience or something of that nature. Um, I think communication is key um, to having a, a really solid relationship uh, regarding uh, that agent client or agent partner um, talent partner relationship. Um, you don't want to be with some agency where you feel like you're terrified to ask your agent something, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just a setup for failure. So you want someone that feels approachable. Um, I know that Jeremy, uh, has got his hand up and also Juliet and Mia has also got a hand up as well. But before we come to you three, I just want to ask you, and this is a question I love because, um, Kathleen, it's one word answers. I've got three questions for you, but one word answers, please. Okay. Um, the first the first question is for me, i.e. for you, self-care looks like what? One word answers? Yeah. You're killing me, you're killing me. Uh, self-care looks like... Let me, can I ask you a question? Uh, yeah. Are you talking about just general self-care as, as like an, like, a, I, like I would say, you know, no, no, for you. Like I would say napping, for example, I love a nap. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, a walk. A walk. Nice. Being an agent gives me what? Joy. Joy. And finally, vulnerability is what? Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Jeremy, I can see you've got your hand up. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. Hello, Kathleen. Um, Jeremy Kinogorov is my name. Um, I was curious when you were talking about, and this speaks to maybe, you know, uh, different differences or not between UK and, and US, when you were talking about your, your clients who are based, you know, in different places, do you uh, do you represent your clients nationally, or 
always nationally or always just your state or do you have partnerships with people that work in different parts of the country or how, how does that work? So our agreement for the agency is for the state of Colorado only. <clears throat> it does not mean that um, I only work on Colorado stuff. If I get a casting that's coming out of Los Angeles and I have the perfect person, I'm going to put them up for it. Um, sometimes uh, talent will have agents in a variety of markets, so I have to be very mindful of not stepping on other agents' toes. For instance, if that particular talent had an agent in Los Angeles, I would defer to them and allow them to submit him uh, so that they keep that relationship healthy. Um, and there's a, a mutual respect among agents of, you know, um, we're not all greedy trying to like win the race. Um, Cause it's really important to me that if a talent has multiple agents in multiple markets that they have the opportunity to nurture each of those relationships. Um, so, um, and I kind of re expect the same in return, right? Um, if it's originating in my market, I would assume that their LA agent wouldn't be putting them up for something that's in my market when I rep them here. Um, we uh, are not limited to working with only uh, talent in Colorado. I have people based in Los Angeles. I have people based in New York, um, San Francisco. Um, some of those uh, for on camera specifically, some of those are relationships that we had and then they went to other markets and we've continued to maintain that relationship because they love a good excuse to come home and visit family. Um, you know, and if, hey, you've got a $2,500 job and you can pop back into Denver and spend the weekend with your family, what, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, then we have some talent that just bounce around, you know, they're, they're, they're in New York, they're in Los Angeles, they're in San Francisco, they're in Chicago. That's just kind of how they function. So um, we're not limited to just people in Colorado by any means. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get a sense that the markets are so big, you know, I mean, because I'm uh, here, here, it tends to be nationally, I suppose. And, and, um, and in Australia, where I'm originally from, it tends to be uh, because there's so much distance between the, the states, even though the population is not great in Australia, uh, the distance between them mean it means that often, you know, people are represented in each state. Uh, which is what you're sort of saying, yes, you will work for people nationally, but, you know, all of your markets are so big that you couldn't possibly have uh, a, uh, you, a, a f full knowledge of everything happening nationally. So you tend to be more state-based. But Exactly, exactly. And um, as for talent that work outside of the state, so we work closely with New Mexico. New Mexico has a lot of film and television. Uh, we work very close to them. Uh, it's about a five hour drive from here. Um, they, we have an agreement with them that they can hire talent as local hires, um, but they will pay uh, for them sometimes travel and accommodations. Um, but it doesn't come with all the other stuff because they're considered a local hire. Uh, one of our neighboring states does a lot of Hallmark stuff and they reach into our market quite often and they will provide a stipend to get there and accommodations because they need to be able to branch out and have a bigger talent pool to resource from. Um, but the bulk of the work that we have is originating and is producing in this particular market. Thank yes, you. Lovely. You're Thanks welcome. for question, Jeremy. Hey, Julia. Good to see you. How are you doing? Julia, you're on mute, I think. Julia? Sorry, guys. I couldn't find the mute on my phone. Hi. Hello. Hi, Kathleen. Oh. Hello, everyone. Hi. This is this might sound like a really curious question. Do you have anybody on your books or boards? You might maybe that's what you call them. Um, or have had in the past, who you rate very highly, you have a good rapport with them, you, you believe in them as an actor, but you find it hard to get them auditions. I'm, you know, I'm just curious to know if that's ever been a situation for you, 
and what you and that actor do to strategize to break through that situation? Um, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you know, a lot of a lot of what we're able to offer to talent is dictated by what the production is, you know, if they want somebody that's 25 with brown hair, you know, I can't put in my most phenomenal blonde hair, 40 year old woman, like it just doesn't, you know what I mean? They don't match up. Um, I often find though, if I have a talent that I really respect that I know is fantastic and they keep auditioning and they're not booking, I tell them it's time to invest in some coaching because uh, typically they're the one, it's them. It's something within them that's holding them back from that booking. Uh, maybe I never book when I go to that casting office. That's a really bad way to start an audition because guess what? You're not going to book. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or um, I, you know, I, I don't like these kind of materials or something. So often I find it's a, it, it's, it's something internal with the talent that they need to kind of work through or peel back or discard or something of that nature. It's them that's holding back from booking the job. Um, maybe they're too rigid. Maybe they're feeling uncomfortable. Um, maybe, uh, you know, we also get this where people are like, I don't book. And I'm like, well, you showed up and you weren't off book with your copy. You weren't prepared, you know, and they repeatedly do that. And I'm like, you need to check yourself. Like you just don't get to just show up. Right. You got to show up and like be prepared just like everybody else, you know? Um, but often I find it's, it's a very tender, but yet simple conversation of, Hey, I think you need to do some coaching. And you need to kind of figure out what your stumbling block is on the inside, you know, um, and peel that back and discard it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That wasn't quite what I meant. It was more, um, what if all those things are in place, their okay. attitude is good, um, but they're just not getting seen for anything, you know, yeah. um, that the, the photos are right that, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, there'd be a checklist, wouldn't there? Um, and uh, I just, I just, you know, I, I personally, you I, I, sorry. No, sorry, Julia, after you. No, no, no. I was just going to say, yes, I'm talking about myself. Talk but about it, it, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm believing that, you know, it's, it, I keep, I just keep going and it's, it's just a matter of time and do all the right things, make all the right causes. You're right. So keeping a good attitude, continuing to invest in your craft. Um, and sometimes it is just a numbers game. You know, mm -hmm. you, you got to do it 15 times before you finally hit one. Um, you, if you're auditioning regularly, you're probably auditioning in the same pocket of women. Um, and, uh, you know, it never hurts to ask your agent or ask your the casting director if you have the opportunity hey, how can I up my game? What am I missing? What, what's not hitting? Um, also, you know, the industry just goes through flow and phases where, you know, sometimes, you know, there just isn't a lot of opportunity for certain types or looks or something of that nature, you know? Um, that is why this industry can be so brutal because it can really bite into your psyche sometimes when you know that you've got everything in order and you feel like you've done all the work and why the hell is it not paying off, right? Um, those are the opportunities to just continue to invest in yourself and keep your attitude high and know what you bring to the table. And, you know, when's the last time you updated your headshots? Does your resume need to be updated? Uh, you know, create your own content. Awesome. I see a lot of young people, I see a, young people, old people, any people, actors, a lot of people are creating their own content. You won't give it to me, I'll make it myself. Yeah. And, and I and think that's a that's really advice. beautiful way to get the juices yeah. flowing. Thank you, Juliet, for your question. It's good to see Thanks. you again. Uh, a few minutes left. Hi, Tammy. Hello. Hi. Thank you, Hi. Kathleen, for being here. Yeah, I, just have, I just have a really quick question. I would like to know what you love most about your job. What about being an agent makes your heart sing? 
Uh, truly, it is the relationships I have with my talent. Um, I've been doing this a very long time. I started, uh, I have a traditional acting background, so I speak actor very well. Um, and uh, I was in the casting industry in New York City for about seven years before I became an agent uh, in Colorado. Um, and you know, um, I would say the greatest reward for me is I'm just a people person. I love people um, and I love seeing them succeed. I like helping them problem solve and uh, see the best in themselves. Um, I like being able to encourage talent to do kind of step out of the box a little bit and raise the bar for themselves. Um, and, uh, you know, don't take this in a, in a negative way, but sometimes I'll just tell people, they're like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm like the old lady in a shoe with a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> I said, they all want something. Um, but I do, I, we really take an investment in knowing our talent. And for me, the, that is the best reward is just that, that energetic exchange between myself and talent. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's wonderful, isn't it? Because, you know, you, you know, we talk about actors playing multiple roles, but I don't think actors often realise that us as agents, we play so many roles, whether it's counsellor, whether it's, you know, mom or dad or, you know, all of these roles. And it's just like, it's so multiverse. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mia, I see you got your hand up again. Is that? Yes. Hey, I have a how are you doing? Question. That's okay. Um, so I've just started my career. I've got my first three professional credits, um, like la this month and last month, um, in theatre and education, like tours in schools. Um, I'm applying for agencies and drama school at the same time because I don't know which one I want to do. Is that an acceptable thing to do? Is it all right to do that? Or Absolutely. Is it I think if you don't explore things, you have nothing to base your decisions off of. So, you know, um, if it comes down to going to school versus, you know, jumping straight in, that, you know, that's something that you need to kind of figure out for yourself, of course, but what are those opportunities look like? And if you don't explore both, how do you make a good decision about it? That makes sense. So, yeah, go ahead and start. Lovely. Thank you, Mia. Great question. Anyone else before we have to dash? Indy, uh, did you have a question? I saw your hand go up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. no so, sorry, I'll just um, give you a, a, a oh, clap yeah. to me, uh, you know, well done on the credits and stuff. So mm. uh, that's awesome. Now, um, uh, just, yeah, myself, I, I, I literally just uh, signed with it with an agent anyway so I'm just finding my way through this industry anyway so just see where I fit and where I slot in so um uh, so, I mean, I mean, like um, I'm, I'm kind of getting approached for uh, a lot of um, uh, bodyguard and um, sort of uh, special forces roles mm -hmm. um, so I mean uh, just jumping on what you said about you know like that focus on something that you're getting looked at for rather than try and sort of go for something that you may get further down the line so we're just as I said I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this so just as I said I'm just exploring where I'm going to be sitting and uh, you know put my coat or put my hat on and then, then we'll just go from there and a lot of what I do is just purely blind luck you know, just uh, put, uh, put, put the baseballs up in the air and just swing for the fences and see where we go. There, there is truly a huge dash of blind luck in this industry for sure. Yes. Um, and yes, focus on what you keep getting cast for, mm. but you can have another focus on the side that you are working on feverishly to expand into, right? But don't give up the bread and butter, right? Beautiful advice to end on. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for, for you know, for coming. I just want to give a note to everyone who's here. On the nineteenth of January, we have uh, Kim Krizan, who is a Oscar-nominated writer, and she wrote *Before Midnight* and *Before Sunrise*. And she is on our next industry industry session. So excited, Kathleen! Thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy, so thank you so much. Really, thank you, everyone. Have a yeah. beautiful, safe, and happy holiday. Yes, thank and you. Thank you. See Bye. you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.